back to the Godot Report. A new Tiles Editor progress report has been published. For those who don't know, the Tile Editor is getting completely overhauled for the 4.0 update. This has been one of the most requested features as the current Tile Editor can be cumbersome to use. Godot is currently one of the best options out there for 2D game development, but these changes should make it that much better. For the 4.0 update, the Tile Creation menus have been split into three modes. The first mode allows editing the atlas properties and creating slash removing base tiles. The second one allows selecting and editing tiles properties. And the last one is to paint properties over the tiles. There's also been work done for importing tiles from Godot 3. Single tiles will be imported into 4.0 as an atlas with a single tile. This could potentially create a ton of atlases, so there will also be a new atlas merging tool. This will gather all the tiles from the selected atlases and create a new atlas with a merged texture. Another highly requested feature was Tile Map Layers. Tile Map Layers allow stacking tiles on top of each other in the same layout. Layers are compatible with Ysort and layers can have different Z index values. This should make it easy to create different heights in top-down games. And with the added support of layers, the inspector has been improved as well. You can easily add, remove, and reorder layers in the inspector. This will most likely be the last progress report before the 4.0 alpha, as there's tons of bugs to fix, but there's actually more to come. So what's next? Godot 4.0 should feature animated tiles, and they're also considering adding support for conveyor belts, where objects will move when they collide with a tile. Godot's multiplayer is getting overhauled for the 4.0 update. First off, the master and puppet keywords are getting removed. Many users found them confusing. Instead, this functionality will be unified into an at RPC annotation with a few optional parameters. An RPC function can only be called by the multiplayer authority, which is the server by default. If you pass in the any parameter, that RPC function will be callable by any connected peer. Now, there's no direct replacement for the rarely used master keyword, but you can achieve that same functionality by using the any parameter and by also checking which peer called the function via multiplayer ID. The sync parameter will ensure that the RPC function will also be executed locally on the sending peer. By default, RPC functions are sent in a reliable way, meaning the protocol needs to keep track of it and wait until the client acknowledges its receival before sending more messages. However, these back and forth checks add latency. For things like player movement, where new data is being sent every frame, low latency is more important than ensuring every network packet successfully arrived. And the unreliable keyword allows this. And since no checks are done, unreliable RPCs are not guaranteed to arrive in order. If the server first sends the message A, and then message B, a client theoretically could receive B first, and then A. So back to our player movement example, we wouldn't want a message containing older position data to update the game state. And so the new ordered keyword ensures that if an older packet does arrive late, it will automatically be disregarded. There is also the addition of channels. You could think of channels like separate streams inside the same connection. This is ideal for things like in-game chat or anything that doesn't have to be perfectly in sync with the rest of the game. In those cases, especially when transferring larger amounts of data, using a separate channel is an efficient way to reduce latency and lower the risk of disconnections. And speaking of multiplayer, there is a new proposal on Godot's GitHub. It proposes a system for multiplayer scene replication. It's pretty common in multiplayer games that when the server creates new nodes that the clients should as well. So this proposal adds two new nodes to Godot, the multiplayer sync node and the multiplayer spawn node. The multiplayer sync node allows you to choose properties that should be synced. The multiplayer spawn node will spawn the scenes that have been spawned on the server. These changes should greatly reduce the overhead needed to get larger multiplayer projects up and running. For the 4.0 update, GD Native is being replaced by GD Extension. GD Extension is a new implementation of the GD Native layer that allows anyone to create C++ plugins for the Godot engine. The goal with GD Extension was to allow users to extend Godot's functionality to nearly the same level as a statically linked C++ module could. A new class registration system allows new nodes defined in plugins to be added to Godot 
indistinguishable from the core nodes. Help pages are automatically made for custom nodes, detailing properties, methods, and signals. This is a breaking change, meaning all GD native plugins will need to be rewritten for Godot 4. A full tutorial on how to make a plugin will be added in the documentation at a later date. And now is the part of the show where we show off some cool projects made in the Godot engine. User Yuki Timmy is making The Legend of Zelda in Godot. They estimate they are 60% done with the game. System Under Surveillance is an upcoming stealth indie game with adventure and puzzle elements inspired by classic retro games. Take control of Adam and Turbo and use their vastly different abilities to trick and avoid enemies. System Under Surveillance is pure stealth at its core and has no combat system. In Quest of Grawl, race up to four players in a game mixing platform and combat over 20 plus races. Use magic items and the power of golden statues to overcome monsters and beat your opponents, and catch the cup first. Space Bandit is a roguelike top-down shooter with crazy firefights, clever AI, and no health bars. Ari's Journey is a retro precision platformer in a top-down action-packed story. Navigate tight corridors and fly at high speeds using precise timing. A precision platformer without any platform. Lumaze is a stylish, reactive puzzle game prototype where you slide blocks and collect tokens while trying to find solutions with the fewest moves. Build, Fight, Drill, Collect. Lumencraft is a top-down action shooter with tower defense elements. Emerge into the fully destructible environment where light and shadow play key roles. Holy Mountain is a short, low-res platformer that takes about 5 minutes to beat. A sage contemplates the view from a mountain peak when he hears a cry for help out from the depths of hell. Wasting no time, he takes hold of a spider's thread and begins his descent down the cliff to rescue the poor soul. Welcome to the Sublime Library, where we archive human thoughts that ended a long time ago. In Capital Island, play as a door-to-door -door seller in this trade-slash-management game. In Banana Hell, jump your way to get the blue diamonds as you try to survive a very annoying banana monologue. A really hard game. As always, leave a comment for the algorithm and thank you for watching.